Hey, hi, hello. Today I'm gonna to show you a quick and easy process I use to do realistic looking photo engravings on anodized aluminum using a diode laser. This is the 10 watt Autor Laser Master 3 Photoshop for some basic edits and then the grayscale image mode in Lightburn. This tutorial is specifically for diode lasers. So if you have one of these big boys over here, a CO2 laser, this tutorial will not apply. All the assets I'm using in this tutorial are listed in the description below. Let's get started. Step one, let's find a nice image to engrave. If you're just practicing and you don't have anything specific in mind, I highly suggest using a website like pexels.com, which is a resource for a bunch of high quality free stock photos. Arguably the most important part to having a photorealistic engraving is having a good starting point with your image. If your image is poor resolution or the exposure is off and the editing is wrong, you could have the best laser in the world. It's going to be really hard to get a good result. And since we're doing a grayscale engraving, I'm just going to do a search for black and white photos and pick out something that looks interesting to me. I chose this photo here because the background color and sizing is very similar to the anodized aluminum card that we're going to be engraving on. It's also mostly made up of these mid-tone grays with a little bit of light tones on his face. I feel like I can get a quality result with this photo. Now that we have our image selected, let's do some light adjustments before engraving. First, I'm going to open up my image and then open up the properties for this image. Over here, you can see under size info that we have a relatively large image by the dimensions set to 72 DPI, and that we're going to have to change. 72 DPI is just too low for the quality engraving we're trying to achieve here, so we have to increase it. I'm going to be increasing my DPI up to 318 because that seems to be a good number for my laser, which is the Autor Laser Master 3. However, there is a right and a wrong way to increase the DPI, so let's do that now. The program I'll be using to make my photo edits is Adobe Photoshop. Now, as I mentioned before, I have to increase the DPI from 72 to 318. To do this correctly, I'm going to go to Image, Image Size, and for the time being, I'm just going to change the uh, settings to inches. So you can see that our original size is 75.8 by 113.7, resolution 72. I'm going to navigate down to this box, and I'm going to input the number that I want, 318. Now, before you click OK, you have to turn off resampling. When you resample an image to a larger size, which is what we're doing with this DPI adjustment, it's going to add a bunch of noise and pixels and stuff that's going to make your engraving look poor. So turn off resampling. And as you can see, the size has changed a little bit. It shrunk down to 17 by 25. That's completely fine and that is necessary. Go ahead and click OK. It won't look like anything has changed on your image, but your image is now 318 DPI. Next, we're going to make a couple basic edits. First, I'm going to change the image mode to grayscale by going to image, mode, grayscale. If you had any color in this image, it would look a little bit different, but since it's a black and white photo, nothing has changed. Next, I'm going to change the contrast by doing image, auto contrast. That just brightened the image up a little bit. Then I'm going to do some auto curves by going to image, adjustment, curves. Um, and then I'm just going to hit auto here. It didn't change too much, but just like bump the highlights a little bit. And after that, the final thing I'm going to do is sharpen the photo a little bit by doing filter, sharpen, unsharp mask. A good idea if you're doing a photo of a human is to base your editing on the eye area of the photo because as people, we are drawn to the eyes of other people. This is up to you all the way to the left on the slider. It'll look like it does in the photo now. All the way to the right, it's going to be extremely sharp and it won't look very realistic. So I like to do something a little bit over 100%, maybe like 110, maybe like 110, 111. And that looks good to me. Next, we have to resize. Now for resizing, we have to consider the size of the object that we're going to be engraving on. I know that the little cards that I'm doing are 54 millimeters wide by 86 millimeters tall. So what I'm going to do is resize this image to be a little bit larger than that, and then I will fine tune it in Lightburn. So I'm going to go ahead and do image size, and I'm going to bring it up to millimeters here in the units. And this time I'm going to select resample. 
When you're resampling, as long as you are making it smaller, it's completely fine. So I'm going to choose 90, and that changes the width to 60. Those are both a little bit, a couple millimeters larger than the canvas, and that's completely fine. So now my image is much smaller. Now I have one more final step because when I do my engravings, I like to engrave on a 90 degree angle instead of a zero degree angle. That is not very important right now and I'll talk about it in Lightburn, but I like to do as much of my image editing as possible in Photoshop before I move to Lightburn. So for me, I'm doing image rotation 90 degrees counterclockwise. This is the final setup before we import into Lightburn. So go ahead and do file, export, export as, I'm gonna keep it as format PNG. I'm gonna turn off transparency, keep everything else the same, export. I'm gonna call it boy, and now I'm ready to go to Lightburn. Now it's time to do our Lightburn settings. The first thing I'm gonna do is create an image mask that is the exact same size as the card that we're gonna be engraving on. To do that, I'm gonna go over here and click the rectangle tool and just drag a rectangle. It doesn't matter what size at the moment. Then go over to the layers panel. I'm gonna change this to line, which it already is. And then down at the bottom, I'm just gonna change it to a brighter color. Let's go with this light blue. Now I'm going to select my layer and change the height and the width to the size of the card, which we mentioned was 86 by 54. And now we have this blue outline being the exact size of the card that I'm gonna be engraving on. Now I can frame the image exactly how I want. To complete the image mask, I'm gonna go ahead and select both layers, go to tools, and then apply mask to image. You could leave this just as is, but I'm gonna make the mask permanent by right-clicking and then doing flatten image mask. Now you can see we're cropped down to the exact size of the card. All right, let's look at the engraving settings now. Go over to the layers panel and double click on this layer. First, we'll start with the image settings that I have. Bi-directional scanning on, negative image on. Because this is a dark background and we're gonna be revealing light, uh, the lightness in the engraving, you have to keep it at a negative image. Line interval matches what we set the DPI of the file to, so that's 318. And then scan angle, I do at 90. So if you're just using a traditional setup and you'll be scanning left to right, you'll keep this at zero. But I like the way my laser looks when I scan up and down. The rest of these I keep off. Image mode, grayscale, number of passes, one, and everything else looks good for there. Now, as far as the speed and power settings, this is gonna be very specific to your laser. I'm using the Otor Laser Master 310 watt, and I found that for the results that I like on my anodized cards, I do 2000 speed, the max power at 9.5, and the min power at zero. So when you're setting max and min power, this only min power only matters in grayscale mode. So when the laser is firing at its highest to reveal these light colors, the whites, it's gonna be at 9.5%. And when it comes across these dark colors, like the black background, it's gonna fire at 0%. And that's when it's gonna give the depth to our image. So the most time consuming part of photo engraving, especially using grayscale, is figuring out the correct combination of speed and power. And to do this, instead of having to engrave this file over and over and over again, wasting time and wasting materials, I do something called spot testing. For example, if we were to bring up the preview right now, to run this full file would take me a half hour every time I ran it. And if I just wanted to adjust the power or the speed, by like 1% just to see if I can get a better shadow on the face, I'm gonna have to wait a half hour in between each run. To get around that, we're gonna use image mask to just pull out specific areas that we wanna test. So I'm gonna go ahead and drag another rectangle around a specific area. I'm gonna do this eye area here. And I like to do this in the area that I consider the most important 
And this is good because it has all of the tones that I want. It has the dark area, it has the mids, it has the light areas, and it has the eyes. So what we're gonna do here is apply this mask to the image. And it's just gonna cut out that little sliver there. And this is completely reversible. This is not a permanent mask. So now, when you preview, if you were to just run this, it's only gonna take five minutes between each setting adjustment you try to make instead of waiting an entire half hour. And here is an example of a card that I did when I was trying to pull out some more detail in the face of this character. And when you're happy with the settings that you have, you can just go ahead and delete the layer and it brings your full image back and you are ready to run it on the full size card. So let's run our full size card now. All right, let's take a look at our final result here. For just modifying the DPI and doing some basic adjustments in Photoshop, I think this came out pretty good. If I were to go back, I would probably add a little bit more sharpening and then see if I can work on the contrast in the face a little bit more. But overall, I'm really happy with how this came out. The grayscale image mode in Lightburn can be kind of annoying to set up, but I think once you dial it in, it gives a nice realistic looking photo engraving. Thanks for watching.